Welcome to Hart County Public Library Outreach Virtual Storytime. We are so glad that you could join us. Honey, the Dog Who Saved Abe Lincoln. Written by Sherry Swanson. Illustrated by Chuck Grunick. Young Abraham Lincoln was kneeling deep in the woods when three shrill blasts of a whistle cut through the quiet. His corn was ready at the meal, and he was late. Watching a frog limp away into the brush, Abe smiled. It wasn't every day he was able to rescue a frog right out of a snake's mouth. Abe hurried back to where Mr. John Hodgen, the miller, was waiting. Now, Abe, what took you so long this time? Mr. John asked. I just can't move along fast like some boys, Mr. John because I see so many little foolish things that make me stop. I can't help it to save my life. Mr. John patted the boy's head and handed him a sack of ground corn. Now get on your way, Abe. You best be home before dark. Abe heaved the bag onto his shoulder and set off on the long path that wound its way like a rusty snake through the Knob Creek Hills to the Lincoln's log cabin. Abe had only a mile or so left to go when something caught his attention. He froze. What was rustling in the bushes? Beneath some brambles at the base of a cliff, Abe found a dog whimpering softly. The dog's front leg was broken. Did you fall, boy? Abe asked. The dog looked up into Abe's eyes, wagging his tail. Abe patted the gentle dog's head and looked around for something to use to set the leg. He was only seven years old, but Abe had spent his whole life on a Kentucky farm and knew how to tend to animals. He pared two sticks smooth with his pocket knife to make a splint. Then he peeled the soft bark off a pawpaw bush to wrap around the sticks. Finally, he tied it all around the dog's leg with some rawhide from his belt. By the time Abe was through, the sun was slanting low through the trees. Abe hefted the bag of ground corn back onto his shoulder and called to the dog. The dog struggled up and limped along after Abe on his three good legs. Abe was going to be late. That wasn't unusual but this time he would have a dog to explain. Abe's father was asleep by the fire when Abe got home, but his mother was waiting up. Oh, Abraham, where have you been off to this time? Didn't you know I would be wearied? I found a real honey of a dog. His leg is broken, Abe whispered. Please let me keep him. Abe looked up at his mother. He'll do lots of good things for me, he told her. You just watch and see. Nancy could never say no to her beloved boy, so the dog stayed. Abe snuck honey, scraps of food, and soon the dog was able to walk. Honey's leg looked like a curve in the road, but that didn't stop him from trotting along after Abe on their adventures. Everywhere Abraham went, Honey went. One day, Abe showed up late to drop off his grain at the mill. Mr. John shook his head. Why do you fool your time away? He asked Abe. You have seen these hills and hollows hundreds of times. I can't understand what you find to keep you so long on the road. Well, Mr. John, Abe answered, Honey got a possum in a hollow stump, and I couldn't get him to leave, and I couldn't leave Honey. Abe wandered off a bit to wait his turn. He took out a soapstone pencil to practice writing his letters on a bit of bark, but soon the woods were calling, and Abe got the itch to answer. Before long, he and Honey found themselves at the mouth of a cave. Deep, twisting caverns traveled for hundreds of miles under Kentucky. 
A boy and his dog could get lost in caverns like these. And sure enough, disaster struck. Abe got jammed between two boulders and couldn't move. Try as he might, pulling himself this way, that way, and back again, he was hopelessly stuck. And night was beginning to fall. Honey whimpered and pawed at the ground. Abe couldn't move. Honey normally never left Abe, but this time he headed alone back into the darkening woods. Honey would need to get help. Back at the mill, the entire town had gathered in the night to search for Abe. Mr. John had been blowing and blowing on his whistle, but Abe hadn't come. Nancy Lincoln asked Mr. John, Have you seen the dog, Mr. Hodgson? Was Honey with Abraham when he came to the mill? Yes, the dog was with him, answered Mr. John. Abe's mother was grateful for Honey. It comforted her to know Abe had him for protection. She waited anxiously at the edge of the dark forest, hoping her boy would come home. Here's Honey! Here's Honey! she called. Suddenly, Honey emerged from the bushes, barking and whining at Nancy's feet. The dog looked up into the faces of one after another until he got to Mr. John. Then Honey jumped up on Mr. John and barked in his face. Grab your torches, called Mr. John. We'll follow where the dog leads. Yelping and panting, Honey headed back through the woods. The townsfolk followed behind him, their torches parting the night. When they got to the cave entrance, Honey stopped. The townsfolk were afraid. Many a silent prayer went up for the boy's safety. Mr. John blew three times on his cane pole whistle. Here I am, called Abe, his voice echoing from deep within the cavern. But I'm fastened. Mr. John carefully made his way into the damp, narrow tunnel. He found Abraham tightly wedged but had no room to swing a sledge to break the rocks. Mr. John could only tug Abe out, even though it meant leaving some of the boys hide behind. Once Abe was back up into the night air, Nancy rushed to hold her beloved son and his precious dog. Abraham was surprised at the crowd. He smiled at his mother. I knew Honey would do great things for me, he said. Now he has paid me back for mending his broken leg. The next day, and for many more days after that, Abe and Honey were back at their adventures, bumping and scrambling their way along the banks of Knob Creek. A boy and his loyal dog, Honey.